Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers. In today's episode we're going to, I'm going to show you uh, how to create an infinite wood floor. In this case a herringbone floor which looks like this one. So we're gonna use the new modifier from 3D Studio Max 2023 array modifier. So this type of um, a solution that I'm going to use today for uh, creating this floor. It can be applied to any type of uh, wood floor that uh, you want to create. You just need to create the basic two or three uh, wood slats and from there you can just multiply it as big as you want. So just to show you how big is this wood floor. It's actually quite huge and uh, as you can see yeah, it can go to the infinite with the size and it doesn't have any uh, repetition in here, as you can probably see. So if you are ready, let's dive into it. So for this episode, you need to go on Archie Products on uh, Casal Grande Padana on the English wood. I'm gonna leave this uh, link into the, this description and try to download the first eight textures. These are really high resolution textures that are looking very nice as you can see and we're gonna use these ones to create the, the wood pattern. We're gonna use the dimension of 20 by 120 because this is the size of these wood pieces. So yeah yeah, just download the first eight and uh, let's start. So first of all, uh, what we're going to do, we're gonna create one wood slat. So I'm gonna go on the top, I'm gonna go on rectangle and I'm just gonna create a rectangle. I'm gonna say like 200 by 1200. Those, this is the size of one wood slat. I'm gonna apply an editable poly to it as you can see and then I will apply an UV mapping. I'm gonna apply this as planar 200 by 1200. As you can see this is our first wood slab. So what I'm going to do now I'm gonna apply another editable poly. I'm gonna make a copy with Control shift push and left click. I'm gonna make a copy of it clone to element. I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees and then I'm just gonna copy the whole thing with vertex from here to here. So now we just created one, actually two wood slats. What we're gonna do next, we're just gonna move the pivot from the center of this plane in this corner. So I'm gonna click here, affect pivot. I'm just gonna move it here. Now I'm gonna rotate the whole thing, 45 degrees on. Now we have the wood slat. Okay, this is a good uh, start. So what we're gonna do now is to change the way the pivot goes. So as you can see right now, it goes on the 45 degrees. So we need to rotate this pivot to 90 degrees. In this way, we're gonna array the objects, the new objects on top of this object and on the left or right of the object. Otherwise, they're just gonna go on the diagonal of 45 degrees. So the pivot now it's 90 degrees and now oh, we're gonna apply the array. You can go by total dimension field and relative offset. So the distance is between, that we need to do is between these two points. So let me just measure that. It's 155. I'll just select this, I'll go here and I will apply the array and I will add the spacing here. So right now, by using the grid in the center, it's just gonna generate the grid from the center. If I unselect this, it's gonna generate from here to the right side. So anyway, it doesn't matter uh, wherever you, you think is better for you. And I will just go 22, quite a lot. I'll go a little bit less because we don't need such a big uh, room. And now I want to go also on the OY direction. So if I add another one, the distance between them is um, gonna go here. Tape right now it's 100, 180, 38. So I need much less than that, definitely. So this means that I need with the spacing to go left. And let's see approximately how much is it. So it's exactly the same distance in both directions. I will uh, just go for a little bit longer to have just a nice surface so you, we can see exactly what's happening. Okay, and now we have the uh, beautiful uh, chevron parquet. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I'm gonna apply an, uh, a shell because we just in the beginning when we created this, this they don't have any thickness. 
it's, it was just a plane. So I'm gonna go on top and apply a shell over and uh, this shell I can just tell the program uh, what's the, the depth what's the depth of this uh, floor so I can say I don't know 20 centimeters probably it's like 15 in reality so now I have so called 15 centimeters and then after that I'm gonna apply a chamfer because I want to have chamfered edges for this for the chamfer I'm just gonna use three millimeters maybe maybe two and what's very important is to apply the chamfer only on the edges so from smoothing output I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna say smooth chamfers only okay now it should look uh, very nice I can also try to have two of them so this means that I'm just gonna go with zero segment in two millimeters and then I can apply another chamfer over this one to create round edges on the already existing chamfer and I'm gonna say one millimeter is too much maybe 0.5 okay now i think it's much better this is the geometry that we have for both chamfers i'm gonna click with ctrl and left click on both of them and i'm gonna say off in viewport and this means that it's not gonna show in the viewport so uh, my uh, 3d steel max is gonna move faster but it's gonna render the chamfer and now uh, we just need to create the material so for the material i'm gonna use a new corona physical material i'm gonna add here a non-metal material material on this one we're gonna attach the those uh, images that we took from the website and to do that we're gonna use the corona multi map which is this one i'm gonna add it in here i'm gonna go with this on the base color and i'm gonna because we downloaded eight uh, images i'm gonna create eight and now we can already apply this to the object uh, so what we're gonna do now uh, we're gonna apply a material by element and we're gonna tell him that there are eight elements which are eight textures in this case this eight and we want this to have it by face material and now we need to load the text so i'm gonna click on this i'm gonna load go to where i have my textures and in the moment that i did that i have my textures uh, applied on the object so what i'm going to do now i'm gonna add quick an hdri so i can see the the so have some light in the scene. I'm gonna go to my textures, HDRI, HDRI heaven. I'm gonna load one always using. And uh, on my, oh, gonna use face material. And uh, I have already the HDRI. I wanna see how the texture is looking. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here and start interactive rendering in Corona in the viewport. As you can see the, it looks a little bit round. This means that I didn't use the correct smooth chamfer and the texture doesn't look in the right direction. It doesn't look like it's in the right direction. It looks like it's stretched on the other direction. Uh, we can fix this really easy. You can use an UVD X form and we can rotate all the textures at once on the whole object. So I add that. I'm going to use the rotation 90 and now all the texture should be in the right direction. This looks good. I like what I'm seeing. I see some textures that are repeating and they're next to each other. Uh, that can be very easy to change. You can just change the seat here and uh, he's gonna change the, uh, the way textures are. It's gonna change the position of the textures on the object. Okay, let's see the material. Okay, what we're gonna do now Next, what we're gonna do next is to create the, the roughness of the object, but we're not gonna work with roughness. I'm gonna use glossiness, but it's exactly the same thing. As you can see, now it has some more glossiness on it. But for that, we're gonna use uh, the normal glossiness. We're gonna have it in here as an instance. And over this, I'm gonna apply a Corona color color. And from this, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna desaturate because I don't need any saturations. And uh, if I want to have more reflection, I'm just gonna use the exposure in here. Now it's starting to look. And then for the bump, I'm gonna use exactly the same. And I will just go in the base bump that is here and over this i'm gonna apply corona bump converter 
and this should be my material have a look okay it's not looking bad also not very amazing maybe the bump it's a little bit too much you can go a little bit less a little bit better so let's see in the perspective i will change the proportions of the render in the viewport custom 0.6 maybe maybe a little bit bigger to have the same proportions as the square that i have in here okay this is looking almost, almost perfect i'm gonna go to the scene and use uh, direct visibility and make it white because i don't want to see uh, anything in my background and also i'm gonna apply i'm not gonna i uh, was thinking to apply the denoising corona high quality of course point eight using all the time and yeah this is how it uh, actually look if you want to have more randomness in this uh, uh, in this floor you can go to the material and uh, on the corona uh, multi map you can add you can add a little bit of gamma random so what is this going to do show you so I'm gonna add some randomness, like 0.2, maybe more. I'm gonna add one so you can see exactly what's happening. So some of the random uh, tiles are gonna become much dark. You can see one, if I add 20, we're gonna have a very huge difference. So I'm just gonna use 0 0.2, 0 0.4 maybe, 0 0.5. I think a 0.4 to be enough. enough. Uh, we can also add some, uh, I will take the blur multiplier because I want to see a really good texture maybe of 0.2 you can if you have 1 or 10 you're gonna see a lot of randomness as you can see but I'm just gonna add a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and now we're gonna have also some randomness in the uh, in the hue of the color so yeah this is it uh, the good part is that you have it now as big as this, but it can be changed at any time. So I can always go back to my array and add more here, probably 15 counts, as you can see, and uh, it's adding everything, but it's taking a while until it's doing it because he needs to do all these passes. To make everything faster, you can just go and off in viewport because it, Corona needs to recalculate everything each time you change the parameters uh, in here. So, um, so as you can see, this is our floor. Uh, it can be as big as you want. Uh, and this method can be applied to any type of floor uh, that you are thinking of. So if you can create the first couple of wood slats uh, after that you can just multiply everything with this array modifier and you can have it infinite uh, in this case it's not infinite but it's quite big if you are thinking that uh, the wood slats are not perfectly aligning with your uh, interior of the room um, there are a couple of different methods how you can do that. Uh, you can apply uh, in one of them a compound object, a boolean or a pro boolean, and you can intersect with an object that is the size of your room. And uh, yeah, you can do it like that. So, okay, so this was the tutorial for today. In case you liked it, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps my channel. So it's gonna help me to create more videos like this in the future. And also please share it with your friends if you think it's useful for your friends or if you have friends that are using the same program as you. And yeah, that's all for today. As I said, if you have any type of, uh, of wooden floor or any type of any tiles, you can use this array modifier to, to repeat all those tiles and to create uh, amazing renders. And see you in the next one. Bye.